So I remember back when I was talking about the upcoming 2020 NBA draft, I was just reading a ton of analysis that this was going to be a quote unquote weaker draft class. But on so many different accounts, the 2020 draft exceeded expectations. A ton of good role players, a couple all-stars slash all NBA caliber players. I even think that there's one or two Hall of Famers from this class. So today we are going to be regrading the 2020 NBA draft. We're going to be grading this on a scale of how that player performed for the team that drafted them. And if it was a short amount of time with that team, did they get anything in return if they were to trade them? So if you guys do enjoy this content, I'd appreciate it if you dropped a thumbs up and let's get into this. All right, let's start off with the number one overall pick, Anthony Edwards to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Leading up to draft night, it wasn't a sure thing that Anthony Edwards was the consensus number one overall pick. There was some Lamelo ball speculation. And with the power of hindsight, the Minnesota Timberwolves made absolutely the right decision. They took somebody who I think could be a Hall of Famer one day in Anthony Edwards. He had some inconsistencies at Georgia, but they saw the potential in him. Edwards finished runner up to Lamelo ball in the rookie of the year race. He improved a lot from year one to year two, and especially from his sophomore year in 2022 to his third year in 2023 where he averaged 24 and a half points and six rebounds was an all-star had a phenomenal round one series against the eventual champion Denver Nuggets and was also the breakout star for Team USA in the FIBA World Cup and now Edwards is replicating those numbers this year but on a more consistent basis he's being more efficient he's making more highlight worthy plays he stepped up his defense and he legitimately could lead the Minnesota Timberwolves to an NBA Finals as a 22 year old so yeah it's an A plus that's what an A plus is for 2020 season was a business for the Golden State Warriors. There was the injuries to Klay Thompson and Steph Curry. The D-Lo experiment didn't work out. So they decided to go fit over best player available at number two. So best player available would have been Lamelo Ball, but they opted for fit in James Wiseman. It's an F. Wiseman played in a total of 60 games with the Warriors. He appeared in 39 games as a rookie, putting up fine numbers, 11 and a half points, five and a half rebounds, shot 52% from the field. But there were some lapses on the defensive end of the floor. Steve Kerr tended to grow a little bit frustrated with James Wiseman, lack of awareness and just ability to pick up some defensive keys. He did not play at all in his sophomore year with a knee injury. And funny enough, the Golden State Warriors won the NBA Finals that year. And then he was included in a four-team trade midway through the 2023 season, which essentially netted the Golden State Warriors' Gary Payton for the former second overall pick. So yeah, it's clearly an F. At number three, Charlotte selected Lamelo Ball. I'm going to give this an A+. Plus. I feel like there's been a little bit of disappointment with Lamelo Ball as of late because he only played in 36 games last year and is only appearing in 22 games this year in year number four. He's yet to make the playoffs for the Charlotte Hornets yet. Just one playing tournament appearance. The only season that he's been fully healthy. And he's someone that has 25 point per game potential. He could lead the league in assists one day. He has all the defensive intangibles as well with his size and frame. And he's also an elite three-point shooter at times as well. But I feel like there's some maturity issues and obviously he hasn't been fully healthy but he's still an all NBA caliber talent maybe one day he could be a hall of famer and that alone earns us an A plus grade at pick number three man the Chicago Bulls they wanted to be cute here at number four they reached on Patrick Williams we knew it at the time then and with hindsight we know it now and in my opinion I think Patrick Williams could have been as good as you would have liked him to be at the fourth overall pick but Chicago did a horrible job developing him they did not prioritize it whatsoever they prioritized veterans like Nikola Vucevic who they ended up trading for DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine and I do think Patrick Williams has some great defensive potential I feel like basically every year after his rookie year we're like this is the breakout season for Patrick Williams he could win most improved player and it just never happened so he's a good defender a good three-point shooter just a little rich to be selecting him fourth overall that's why I'm giving him a C I don't think that Isaac Okora was a phenomenal pick either at number five but I'm giving this a B grade because I think that Cleveland has done a very good job realizing what Okoro can be as a nice complimentary defender to this team overall and he's somebody that could be on an all-defensive team this year in year number four as a 23 year old his three-point shot is also falling as well shooting a career high 39 percent from three on the most amount of attempts he has taken so far in his career so i'm gonna give that a b grade even though he's not the best offensive player in the world i said that the bulls did a terrible job prioritizing the development of patrick williams at four but what about the hawks taking oneka Okongwu at number six when they already had clint capella on the roster I'm giving this a B minus. I actually think Okungwu has really high potential as a starting center in this league. The only thing is we have never seen him as a full-time starter because Clint Capella is still on this roster four years later. He's appeared in 233 NBA games in his four-year career, and he has started just 36 of them. I think what we've seen from Okungwu so far this year has been his best year yet, and I would be very excited if he was the full-time starter with Trey Young as the point guard next year, and I think he could have a breakout season, but we will never see that unless they move on from Clint Capella or at least bench Capella for Okungwu. So for that, I'm giving it a B-. minus. He's still a good player, though. Don't worry, Warriors fans. You didn't have the only F for that long, so I'm sorry, Pistons fans. 
Killian Hayes, it's an F. Now, I don't know what would have been better for Detroit. If Killian Hayes just played one year with the team and we never saw him again, or when he ended up playing four years where he actually hurt the franchise each and every year, he didn't better anybody around him. He never shot above 30% from three. He never shot above 40% from field until this year before getting waived by the Pistons 42 games into the season. Man, Killing A's had so much potential. I was so high on him coming into this draft as well, so it hurts me to give this an F grade. This is kind of like a reoccurring theme here. Talked about it with the Hawks and them not allowing their first round pick here in the top 10 to be a starter, and that's what happened with the Knicks pick at number eight when they selected Obi Toppin when they still had Julius Randle on the roster. And obviously, Randle is a much better player, so this is to a lesser extent from the Hawks situation. I'm gonna give the Obi Toppin pick a C minus. I do think that the Knicks did a poor job developing Obi. They did a much better job with their first round pick that they had in the 20s in this draft as well. Toppin could really never develop as a full-time five defender. And he was really just used as a spot-up shooter, something he really wasn't all that at Dayton. Obi's a fine offensive player in this league, but was definitely not worth the eighth overall pick. I wanted them to take Tyrese Halliburton at the time, and that didn't happen. So at number nine, Washington selected Denny of Deha. And this is one of the better picks outside of the top five here in the top 10. I'm giving this a B plus. Denny has been great this year in year four. And outside of Anthony Edwards and Lamella Ball, he's the next best guy in this top 10. He's averaging 14 and a half points, seven rebounds, four assists a night for the Wizards this year, shooting 51% from the field and 38% from three, improving as a defender as well. Washington did something good for once and took a steal of a guy here at number nine. Yes, in hindsight, they could have ended up with Tyrese Howard Burden, but they could have also ended up with a couple players that were much worse than Denny. So to finish out the top 10, the Phoenix Suns selected Jalen Smith out of Maryland. Now, Jalen Smith is a good player for the Indiana Pacers here in April of 2024, but for the Phoenix Suns, this was an F pick. Smith just played a year and a half in Phoenix, 56 games, where he averaged four points and three rebounds in nine minutes a night, and then he was traded midway into his year two along with a second round pick to acquire Torrey Craig from the Indiana Pacers. Like I said, Smith is a good big man for the Pacers currently. Phoenix Suns selecting him at 10 with that point guard that went 12th overall to Sacramento. This is flat out an F, the third one in this lottery. Coming in at number 11, San Antonio selected Devin Vassell, the second player out of Florida State in this lottery, joining Patrick Williams. This is getting a B plus from me. I really like Devin Vassell's potential as a three-level scorer once he reaches his peak in this league. He's on a bad Spurs team right now, but is still having a very good year four, averaging 19 points, four rebounds, and four assists a night. He's above average shooter. There are some question marks with his defense, but Devin Vassell is still one of the better picks of this lottery. At number 12, the Sacramento Kings selected Tyrese Halliburton out of Iowa State. Yeah, this is going to be my third A-plus in this draft so far. Obviously, we know how good Halliburton is in 2024, arguably the best passing guard in all of basketball. But he was still a really good player for Sacramento. Played a year and a half there, averaging 14 points, 6 assists, 3 and a half rebounds a night, and was super efficient. 47 from the field, 41% from 3, and 85% from the line. And they got a phenomenal return when they traded Halliburton at the February deadline of 2022, where they acquired DeMontis Sabonis for him. And Sabonis has been a top 10 player in the league this season. This was truly a win-win trade, so it's going to get an A-plus grade for me. Shout out to Sacramento doing something good and starting off this decade on the right note after just an abysmal abysmal 2010s from them all right i'm gonna have my fourth f in the lottery and that's gonna be kyra lewis to the new orleans pelicans yeah it's definitely an f lewis played in 118 games for the pelicans he was dealing with multiple injuries during his time in new orleans he averaged five points less than two assists and two rebounds a night in around 14 minutes on average and was not really a good defender either he ended up getting traded this year so his pelicans tenure is over so it's clearly an f and i actually liked him a ton two coming out of Alabama so it's a shame and to finish off this lottery we're going to talk about Aaron Neesmith going to the Boston Celtics and I'm going to give this a B plus actually Aaron Neesmith is one of the best three-point shooters in the league this year and has been super impactful for the Pacers team as they're making the playoffs now for Boston he was fine we saw the three-point shot potential but he really didn't play well enough to crack the rotation consistently he was in the Malcolm Brogdon trade so I'm going to give him a little bit of bonus points for him there At number 15 the Orlando Magic selected Cole Anthony the point guard out of UNC 
I'm going to give this grade a B plus. Anthony already got extended by the Orlando Magic and is one of the better scoring point guards off the bench. They got him here at number 15. So in my opinion, that should be a B plus on the value alone. At number 16, the Detroit Pistons selected Isaiah Stewart out of Washington. I remember not liking this pick when it originally was made, but I was wrong. I'm going to give it a B plus. Like Cole Anthony, Isaiah Stewart has been extended. And I legitimately think if the Pistons traded him at this most recent trade deadline, they would have got two first round picks for him. At number 17, this was everybody's favorite pick at the time. The Oklahoma City Thunder selected Alexis Pukuzewski. And yeah, it did not work out whatsoever. OKC is known to be a pretty good drafting team. It's an F though. Throughout Poku's career in 162 games, he averaged seven points, four rebounds and two assists a night and shot 38% from the field, 29% from three, 69% from the line, really didn't develop a handle or mold into the potential a lot of draft analysts believed he could have shown at the NBA level. At number 18, Dallas selected Josh Green out of Arizona. Like Cole Anthony and Isaiah Stewart, he got extended, so I'm going to give it a B plus. You can develop a theme here. If you're a rotational guy that's been extended and is looking like they're a net positive player that you got outside the lottery, that's a job well done drafting. Josh Green can knock down some threes. He can play some defense. He can run the floor. Maybe not taking a step that we thought he would have done this year based off his high 2023 season, but it's still a good role player. That's why it's getting a B plus. The Pistons went with Sadiq Bey. At number 19, I don't like him as much as I like Josh Green, Isaiah Stewart, or Cole Anthony, so I'm giving it a B. Bay never really found his defensive footing at the NBA level, in my opinion. There was just, honestly, a lot of inconsistencies on both ends of the floor. Unfortunately, he did recently tear his ACL, so he may miss all of the 2025 season, but I think was still a solid rotational piece that the Pistons found at 19, and then was basically traded to the Hawks for four second-round picks at that 2023 deadline. At number 20, the Miami Heat selected Precious Achua out of Memphis. I'm going to give this grade a C+. Achua is a fine rotational piece and has been pretty pretty good for the Knicks this season with all of their big man injuries, but Achua's time in Miami wasn't pretty. It was just one season in his rookie year and then was in the Kyle Lowry sign and trade. So they did leverage him to get a point guard, but they could have just drafted a better point guard who went one pick later. So that's why I'm just giving this a C plus. Because at number 21, the Philadelphia 76ers selected Tyrese Maxey. So like Anthony Edwards, like Lamella Ball, like Tyrese Halbert, and Tyrese Maxey is joining those three, getting an A plus grade in this class. Phenomenal job by the 76ers front office. Getting somebody that's played all four years for them was an all-star this year in 2024 averaging 25 points six assists and four rebounds and have kept the Sixers playoff hopes alive and Maxi is going to be legitimately a rookie max extension guy this offseason and getting that value at 21 it's the definition of an A plus at number 22 the Denver Nuggets selected Zeke Naji, a big man out of Gonzaga I'm giving this a C I thought it was a little premature that the Nuggets extended Naji last offseason and he has definitely taken a step back this year so maybe it's just a weird year for Zeke Naji, but yeah I'm getting to give this a C grade. I also hate that they extended him one year too early. At number 23, the Minnesota Timberwolves selected Leandro Balmaro. Who? Yeah, they traded up for him. I'm giving this an F. There were so many good rotational guys that went after Balmaro. He just spent one year in Minnesota, averaging one point and one rebound a night, appearing in 35 games, and then was in the Rudy Gobert trade. He really didn't do much in Utah. It's an F pick. At 24, the Denver Nuggets selected RJ Hampton. I'm giving this a D. Yeah, they pretty much traded up for this pick as well. So not a good draft for the Nuggets here in 2020. And they've pretty much been known to be a good drafting team. Hampton just spent half a year in Denver before being included in the Aaron Gordon trade at the 2021 trade deadline. And then has played on a couple teams since. It was crazy. He was the fifth ranked recruit going into that collegiate season. He ended up playing overseas. He was ranked over Tyrese Maxey and LaMelo Ball. At 25, the Knicks traded down to get Emmanuel quickly. This is going to be an A grade for me. Quickly still, in my opinion, is one of the more underrated players in this league, especially on the defensive side of the ball. His first three years in New York as the 25th overall pick, he averaged 13 points, three rebounds, and three three assists a night, shooting 42% from the field, 37% from three, and being an absolute elite free throw shooter at 87%. He was included in the OG and an OB trade this year. This season in 2024, he's averaging 16 and a half points, three and a half rebounds, four and a half assists, shooting 40% from three, and looks like he could be a real true stud point guard with his expanded role in Toronto. At number 26, Boston selected Peyton Pritchard, who did get extended. I'm giving this a B plus. Pritchard is a really good backup point guard. He doesn't really turn the ball over. He can knock down his three and he can run that half-court offense. Phenomenal pick by Boston here late in this first round. At number 27, Utah selected Yudoka Azubuki out of Kansas. It's an F. Azubuki spent three years in Utah, averaging three points, 
three rebounds in nine minutes a night for the Jazz. And this pick just looks so, so much worse knowing who went after him. Because at number 28, Minnesota made up for that Leandro Bomaro pick and they selected Jaden McDaniels out of Washington. It's going to be an A for me. McDaniels has been one of the best defenders in this league since getting drafted in the 2020 class. Got a nice extension from the Timberwolves. And I would love to know, who would you have higher in a redraft, Emmanuel Quickly or Jaden McDaniels? Let me know in the comments. At number 29, Toronto selected Malachi Flynn out of San Diego State. He had a recent 50 point game, so I'm going to give this an A+. I'm just kidding. It's going to get a D+. Malachi Flynn isn't a great player in this league, but shout out to him getting 50. And the last pick here we're going to talk about is Desmond Bain out of TCU going to the Memphis Grizzlies at 30. It's an A+. Bain is one of the best three-point shooters in the league. And over his last three years for Memphis, has been averaging 20.5 points, four assists, and four and a half rebounds a night, shooting 47 from the field, 41% from three, and 86% from the line. I would still take the other four A-plus guys over him in Lamelo and Tyrese Halberton and Tyrese Maxey, but I do think Bain is right in that tier. This was not a good second round draft class, but there were some nice finds in here as rotational guys. Shout out to Xavier Tillman going to the Grizzlies at 35. Trey Jones to the Spurs at 41. Isaiah Joe to the Sixers at 49. That's a great pick. Bebo Paul to the Sixers at 58. And Sam Morell to the Bucks at 60. A nice Mr. Irrelevant pick. So that's going to be for me. I hope you guys did enjoy. Drop a thumbs up if you guys did enjoy me regrading the 2020 draft class. Let me know what you agree or disagree with in the comments below. And let me know also if you want to see me regrade the 2019 draft class. I love you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.